Travel difficulties. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Jackie Gifford. I am the editor in chief of Travel and Leisure. We are the world's leading travel media brand, um, reaching some 28 million people. And I am here in my home in New York. We're living in. I'm just so thrilled to be able to speak with you and introduce my dear friend, Chris Norton. I have known Chris for many years, beginning with his time at Four Seasons. And now he is the CEO of Equinox Hotels. So, Chris, um, I'd love to just hand it over to you and have you share a little bit about what you've been doing since you joined Equinox. Sure. Thank you so much, Jackie. Great to be on this program with you. And thanks, uh, Jonathan, for organizing it. Listen, um, I've been in New York. I'm in New York, as you are, Jackie, and I've been uh, uh, heading up the Equinox hotel effort for the last three and a half years. And coming into this was the idea that you know, we all, all the brands in the luxury side and on the lifestyle side are struggling with diff truly differentiating themselves. And we felt that the world was ready for something different. And we, re we were really out to redefine uh, luxury lifestyle by extending Equinox as a lifestyle brand around high performance living. And so we spent a lot of time uh, based on research and experience uh, to position and truly differentiate um, an experience and designing something that uh, would be, could appeal not especially to an age group, but to a mindset around, um, and I don't want to use the word wellness because it's it's so broadly used, but you know, well-being in this, I heard a definition last week, I think I mentioned it to you when we talked, uh, and that Susie Ellis brought up, this whole idea of well-being is, you know, things, things you do to yourself. And so, um, and we launched last year in July and August and um, had a very successful launch with, with our uh, the manifestation of the hotel brand and the hotel piece of Equinox uh, in the middle of New York, in Manhattan and Hudson Yards, Chelsea, uh, you know, opening the, the hotel and club combo and building a very powerful tech platform to integrate the experience of an overall uh, repositioning as lifestyle slash luxury. Yeah, I have to say, I mean, you, your property made travel and leisure zit list this year. It's the best new hotels of the year. We spend, you know, a ton of time and research sending editors and writers out into the field. And I have to admit, we've, you know, held, we held a conference actually at your property in the fall and it's just absolutely unique for New York and really for the world. Um, I guess, could you tell us in the audience right now, what is going on with the hotel? How are your employees? What's sort of the current state of things here for, for the property in New York? We kept the hotel open as long as we could. Uh, we decided to close it by the end of March. Um, and of course, worked very, very closely with all of our staff uh, on the hotel and the brand side in general um, to uh, maintain uh, very close contact. Uh, up to today, uh, we were over communicating uh, by including them in what we're doing with with a very strong attitude towards relaunching, opening it again. You know, we did it last July, so we're going to do it again, but re reopening it with a language and a message that is adapted and maybe more appropriate even to, you know, the new world we're going to live in. Um, you know, with this horrible catalyst that you know change, will change our behaviors. I think uh, in ways to come. So we're all gearing up. We're I'm totally zoomed out, uh, as all of us are. Probably. I am too. <laughs> I have zoom eyes. I think, but so we're working very hard to, and we're we're very obsessed. With, you know, and I mentioned to you, I think last week. You know, I, I, I was raised in Switzerland, so the values around cleanliness are kind of table stakes for us anyway. And the brand on the club side also has been always known for very, very high cleanliness and hygiene standards. And, you know, I believe we're, it's our responsibility to take that and elevate it even further uh, and kind of redefine what, what this new normal will look like. And uh, as, you know, this, my, the previous uh, show that, that, you know, it's going to be the new table stakes around um, making you feel safe and clean. Um, it's not going to be the essence eventually of the stays. Um, but it's certainly going to be a very, very high on the on the important list. 
So we're working towards that and we're looking towards. Sorry. Um, I've been an Equinox fitness member for a long time. You know, my husband too, and he's been doing the virtual workout sessions that they've been offering. How has the hotel side really been keeping in touch and staying in touch with guests? Because I, I think what we're seeing right now, and I'm seeing actually from what performs well for us digitally, you know, hospitality brands across the board are having to get really creative with how they stay in touch with their guests because it's really just about making sure that everybody knows that we're thinking of one another. You know, I've seen it across the board from, you know, everybody, hotels, you know, having their bartenders share their favorite recipes to right. Six Sense is doing a virtual marine biology program for little kids to get them in, engaged. So how have you really brought the world of Equinox Hotels to people's homes in this challenging yeah, time? Yeah. I think it's a great question. We're all, we're all blessed by the advances of technology, of course. So what, what makes, what makes our, our marketing efforts and our marketing platform a bit different than I, you know, I mentioned before that we spend a lot of time and money uh, building a platform that we can um, we can scale as we roll out new hotels. Yeah. But we on the club side, where we have you know hundreds of thousands of active members, uh, we're out on a daily basis. We connect uh, through an, through the app, and on the hotel side, we have sent several mailings to previous guests. And as you mentioned, you know, doing very similar things around, uh, you know, a high performance lifestyle and uh, from healthy pancakes and and healthy drink. I think being in, in constant communication is very important. So as we come back, back online, that uh, people feel comfortable engaging as they start traveling again. Yeah, I think actually that one of the most important things I heard recently is that, you know, for those of us who are lucky enough right now to work from home and really take advantage of this time, one of the best things we can do is actually use this to boost our immune system, get healthy, really think about, you know, how we take care of our bodies. So I guess in my next, so, so what does re and I know lots of people have on this, even on this, um, this conference have shared what they're planning on doing, but I, I'd be curious to see what you think, because obviously we're here in New York, it's got a different set of challenges, but, um, but I don't doubt that you're up. I think we have an advantage because, you know, as a brand, the, the thinking around the brand and the approach of Equinox as a lifestyle brand, you know, already played towards a healthy, high performance lifestyle. And so when we say clean, clean goes beyond you know, a rag and cleaning the table and making sure that, you know, to, that's wow. table stake. And everybody has mentioned that. So it's going to be as a, as a brand, uh, and this goes software and hardware, you know, on design issues. And I just touch a minor, like an, I pick up a detail, but, you know, when we design guest rooms, um, their hardwood floors, uh, their hard surfaces, they're paper and plastic free. Um, the rooms have no throw pillows. They have no throw cushions. Mm -hmm. All the stuff that I always felt was you know, counterintuitive to clean because the, the, the cushions end up on the floor, which is where your rolly bag was. It was in the airport bathroom an hour before. And so we tried to really clean up the room and make it just very efficient and, and clean, you know, as a new luxury, as a new definition of luxury. But even on, even on software standards, so when I say soft service standards, I remember when we rewrote our standards and you know, one of the things that I've always, you know, believed, uh, staff should never initiate a handshake. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so when, I remember when we wrote that standard, everybody, you know, thought I was the guy who hated teddy bears because it is such a nice thing in hospitality to shake hands, but it's not when you travel. And so, of course, today, that's such a relevant standard that the whole idea of person, you know, personal distance and, and touching is... You know, today because we were pushed into it makes makes more sense. So, a, I think we're well positioned uh, to relaunch, and and we're well positioned because our technical platform allows us not only in theory to talk about all these things that we all talk about, is to actually deliver and consistently execute. At a, we heard about uh, you know the check in check out on an app that's that's contactless. We're designing and working on the entire stay experience if you choose to, to be contactless. So that means that from the reservation to checkout and departure, if you don't want to, you don't have to interact with staff. If you don't want to, it's a choice. Uh, but we're designing that entire guest experience and we can deliver on you know, opening your guest door, uh, controlling the elevator, all through your phone. Um, as I mentioned before, paperless and plastic free room setups you know, means that all of that is tech driven 
And, you know, we even before opening, we were up to over 80% on all internal communications and, and orders uh, through the iPad and the, and the app. Hmm. And this is a luxury hotel experience. I'm not talking about something that would be typical younger or tech. But this is the way people, you know, they already move towards that. And I think that COVID will accelerate and will, uh, will just make it even, even more important. But we're excited because, again, we have the platform, the bricks and the mortar, the service attitude, and the ability to execute consistently that will allow us to, I think, come into this new world and deliver a customer experience and stay that's going to be spectacular. And, yeah. And, yeah. Can you tell people a little bit about the Equinox bed? Because I'm still obsessed with it and the amount of money you guys spent on making sure that people get a good night's sleep, which I still think is important and actually even more important in today's world as everybody I talk to has that 2 to 4 a.m. wake up time of anxiety. So right. <laughs> that right. I had one last night. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, so the bed, I mean, the bed is one of many, many uh, pieces that a, a well-being experience when and when you say clean this is what i mean extending into cleanliness beyond just cleaning the room but clean living clean sleeping something that is good for you that is truly well-being but we spend two years uh, designing not only a bed and a mat, proprietary sleep system that uh involves of course the, the base the base and then the mattress and we have it handmade in europe and the whole bed is made out of uh, natural materials. There's nothing that is uh, chemical. There's no glues. There's mm. nothing that is not all handmade. And it's a series of mats that include horsehair and charcoal and seaweed and coconut and, and cotton. And it, it basically allows the bed to breathe. So I'm sure you've been to hotels where you get in a nice bed and you start sleeping and 20 minutes into your sleep, you wake up and you're, yeah. you're into a sweat. With, and what happens is the, the bed actually locks in moisture and, and builds heat, allows you know air to pass through the mattress very easily. And then the way we make the bed and the feathers we use, and we have a dual duvet system that helps you regulate you know your own sleep experience and temperature, uh, and you know goes goes along the lines of what you have read about called sleep divorce, mm -hmm. because it's come a very important piece of. I love that. I lo I'm obsessed with it. I love that, you know, that was an investment you made knowing that people were going to prioritize it and care about it. I think that's going to still hold true, no doubt. And the other thing that you did was really rethink uh, food and beverage, but also the amenities in the room as it relates to health and well-being, if you want to quickly talk about that. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, it was, and again, this is something I think that we did last year already because Remember that our definition of luxury is well-being in the broader sense. And well-being then translates into you being the best version of yourself, so high performance. And the elements around high performance were movement, so the club and the gym, and the nutrition piece, and the regen piece, which we just talked about, the mattress being here this morning. Like Our hotel is hospital-grade air filtration mm -hmm. and filtered water that makes it as clean as you can drink in the world, I think, out of a tap. So the environment we create is is a very a very high quality, but the where most hotels today get away from private bars uh, and room service, they stop it. We actually went the other way, and we we deconstructed the room service tray and wagons to deliver a, a in room dining experience that is uh, spectacular. And the food and the menu approach, the way we buy the healthy foods, the way we prepare them, and the way we deliver are all high performance food groups also. So anything you eat and you drink, you know, is the private bars also, instead of having 30, 40 items in a private bar, we have almost eight kind of separating uh, or drawing new lines, kind of blurring retail and food and beverage. So a lot of impulse buying you want to do in a room that is uh, well-being related as part of that experience. And so I think, you know, we're now reworking that again to be even more into beverages and food that, uh, help you replenish, regen, uh, eat and drink healthy. And the food delivery allows us to do a contactless room service experience in a way that is, I think, very innovative and fun and yum. I've been, you, we talk about this idea, you and I, all the time over the past couple of weeks, in particular about high performance living. And I think when we come out of this, people, again, are going to be prioritizing their physical health, for sure, boosting their immune system, but also the mental 
health side of this. So what do you see or what role can Equinox play in, in being an innovator in this space and any things that, you know, you want to change? You've mentioned the contactless day, which I think is really interesting and smart, but is there something else that you, you know, you're working on that you believe could be a way forward for a lot, for yeah. your brand? I think it's a very important question because we think about wellness uh, and maybe we're you know going back to Roman Roman times two thousand years ago when they said in the healthy body it's not only your physical well being as you mentioned it's your emotional and your emotional and mental well being and it all ties together and it all ties into uh, things that we as innkeepers you know can be part of and while we can't address medical needs we can certainly create environments that go beyond gilding the lily we can create environments in a world that I think is going to be much more focused on substance and content than style. And style is going to be important, of course. Uh, it's always gonna, important in a way, you know. The, yeah. yeah. But it's not going to be the main differentiator. People will want to know when they consume a service or a product, what does this actually do for me, for my well-being, which includes mental and physical. And, and as it all hangs together, I think – you mentioned the, the the mattress, which is part of a sleep and regen approach, which ties into air conditioning and air quality, and you know how you feel when you when you sleep and eat well, your emotional mental state is better. It so it all does tie together, and I think that's where the brand is positioning itself as a luxury lifestyle provider of a lifestyle that you know helps you as a traveler or as a member to. Be the best version of. I've I've actually lived in a hotel once I, uh, long ago with my family. Um, we've traveled the world. I feel fortunate that I've been able to stay in some beautiful experience places, and I I consider hotels my safe space, my safe haven. Because when I check in, I and I wrote about this actually in my March editor's letter. When you check into a hotel, you get to drop your bags, your physical baggage, but also your emotional baggage too, because you know that you're being taken care of by professionals. Right. So as we look ahead, um, how do we make sure that that sort of, again, that mental side of things, how do we preserve this idea of hotels as, uh, you know, a place, a place mm. where people can check out? Um, because right now, again, there's a lot of nervousness. So, you know, we're, we're taking care of that and the hospitality industry is going to no doubt do the best they can to make sure that people that the cleanliness feeling um, like when they step into a place, all of that's going to be taken care of. But how do we, again, address that mental side and sort of preserve the image of hotels as being these um, places uh, of respite and, and relaxation, because that's what they really essentially are ultimately. I think, I, think um, I mean, they're safe havens in many ways. And I guess since, since you grew up in Louis at the Plaza. Not quite, not contact. quite like that. It no. was the Sheraton Doha. Let's put it that way. No, that's not so bad. <laughs> no, but, it was fun. Though. No, I think, I think ho hotels like great restaurants uh, or experience, when, when you walk into a great hotel, you, 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 it makes you feel good. And, you know, if all we, if all, I use this for decades when, when I talk to the staff, it is our job to make sure that we make people feel good feel comfortable and whatever that is part of that big bucket of feeling good and and every guest is different so what makes you feel good might not make bob or john feel good so we've spent a lot of time on the professional approach and the service delivery of being in if my staff can read you correctly and within a nanosecond understand what your needs are and then adapt to those and that could include speed you would define a good hotel service by the general manager greeting you in the lobby and, you know, shaking your hands. And I remember being in a lobby and here I was in a hurry on a checkout and the desk said, oh, the general manager would like to say goodbye to you. Would you mind waiting? Yes, I mind waiting. I want to, <laughs> I want to go. I got to make my flight. <laughs> a lot of today's younger CEOs define luxury by get me in fast. Don't talk to me. Get me on the elevator. So, but you've got to do both. And I think your point of being able beyond cleanliness, which is going to be table stakes and safety and all of that, you know, we still have to make sure uh, that we provide an environment that is special and where people walk in and they feel they're, they're special. I think that the retraining of staff as they come back is going to be crucial. I agree. A hundred percent. Know how to uh, talk to, including body language, talking to body language is huge. 
react to customers' fears and needs as we transition back into you know, something that's going to be very normal six to 12 months again from now. I agree. I think investing in um, the employee training and understanding and then being intuitive is actually one of the most important things that we can do. This. It's been fascinating. Thank you to both Thank of you. Thank you. Thanks, for Chris. Su- such an interesting session. Quick one for you, Chris. When are you going to launch in London? So we um, have we're having several conversations uh, on prime real estate in London. Uh, we would want to be there tomorrow if we could, uh, and we're actually looking at one possible conversion. Um, but in the in the in the years to come, we'll be there for sure. Excellent. It's, you know, it's a yeah. No, very so good. Because I I must say I love the way you're dis- dissecting the whole approach to the guest experience. And to yeah. physical health, so you know, you know the, clubs, the clubs already are in London. We opened. We have a few clubs in London, and we think we could have five or six there. So we'll have one or two hotels there in the very near future. Excellent. Good. Well, listen. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Thank you for joining us. And thank you very much. Thank it's you. Such an interesting session. Good luck with the rest of the day. Thanks. Um, thank Bye-bye. you so much. Bye, guys. Great. Now we move on to a. Um, as a UK section, leadership from UK stakeholders in the hospitality sector. And we've got, uh, there you are, David. Um, I'm going to hand it over to you, David. David's head of leisure and, corp- and the corporate partner at CMS and in discussion with his panel. So over to you, David. We need to get a woman, we need to 